Oh man, you have no idea how happy it makes me to finally see the blue sky and some sunshine. Looks like spring is finally here, folks. I'm on my way to Hershey right now to get my hand checked out. I uh, had an injury a few days ago. You see a little bit on the palm of my hand between my index finger and my middle finger. Unfortunately, I put a drill bit through it, so that sucked. So I have my final uh, follow-up appointment on that, and hopefully I'll get the all clear and I won't need to go back anymore. got my coffee I'm so happy to actually have coffee this this is uh, helping to wake me up bought it on my way to my appointment and uh, got out my morning coffee actually the lady next to me in the car she's drinking her morning coffee so everybody loves their morning coffee mine happens to be from Dunkin Donuts today and not from my house All right, so I made it to my uh, my appointment, but I'm running about five minutes late, so I gotta get moving. I gotta hurry up. Get in there, I can't keep them waiting. All right, well, that's done. I guess part of the problem of being late is then you end up having to wait. But I kept them waiting, so I had to wait a little longer. All right, time to go. Get on with the rest of the day. Uh, about 10 days ago, I ended up putting a uh, drill bit through my hand was not a uh, wasn't a pleasant pleasant situation it uh, didn't quite go the whole way through but uh, it, it went pretty far and you see it right there uh, between my middle finger and index finger it's healing up nice I pretty much got the, uh, the bill of health I'm in good shape and almost got released but just to give you all an idea of how how big this drill bit was this is it right here you know, it's, it's a big, thick, 3 8 inch drill bit. Uh, this is the one that I managed to stick at least three quarters of the way through my hand. So, I'm healing up okay, and I think I'll be in good shape shortly. Just the only thing to worry about now is continuing to keep an eye on it for possible infection, and I guess that's about it, but apparently it can be a pretty... Uh, pretty difficult spot uh, in your hand uh, to have an injury so keep an eye on it Sheesh. so I had a couple of moments of uh, self-consciousness related to putting videos out on YouTube talking about uh, what it is I'm working on um, just following me around doing various activities let me tell you what a couple of things We'll get back to the self-consciousness in a minute. The YouTube world is extremely difficult. I mean, just to create video content every day on every single thing and trying to tell a story yet being productive, it's difficult. I, I, don't, I don't know how people do it. You know, I've seen really fantastic videos that are extremely entertaining, but you just, once you start analyzing how much pre-work and how staged everything is it's impressive you know they it's it's insane when you think about the camera angles and the fact that you know they make it look like they're going into something or walking into a store for the first time but they've been in there they've been in there set up their equipment and then they show up and everything's you know it's, it's incredible I mean I'm not I'm not knocking the production value of a good fantastically filmed YouTube video I felt like I had to live up to that and try to do the same production value and production quality. I, you know, I can't do that unless I was just making videos and that's all I was doing. There's no way I'd be able to actually get stuff done and create a video at the same time unless I had a camera crew or something following me around. And let's face it, I mean, my life's not that interesting yet. I've got four subscribers, most likely just family members and uh, my fiance, that's it. 
so that's that's part of maybe where a little bit of my self consciousness had come from, and, and I and I came to grips with that. You know, my channel and my videos aren't necessarily entirely about entertainment, but maybe more about providing a message. So I've come to grips with that. So the self consciousness part came into play when I started thinking about, you know, what is it that I actually do? What value am I adding? What content is it that people are looking for that I can provide? And uh, I started thinking, I have nothing, you know, and maybe there's a lot of uh, a lot of folks out there that feel the same way that maybe your life is boring and you have no no value to add, no content to really provide and uh, put out there for other for other people's benefit. And uh, that, that went through my mind. I, I literally thought like, you know, I'm, I'm not doing anything special. I, I'm not anything, you know, superhuman. I don't have, you know, crazy travel stories. I'm not super popular. I'm not a celebrity or anything like that. So what is it that I'm gonna be offering uh, to other people, you know, on my channel uh, and YouTube videos? So that, that literally went through my mind and, and I felt a little bit self-conscious, like, you know, why am I even doing this? You know, what's the point? So as I started to think about that more, and, and, I, and I, maybe it was because of this appointment I went to this morning at the uh, hand specialist, I start to look around and think, okay, well, I, I don't feel like I'm anything special, but I look at some of the other things that people have going on in their lives. Like, you know, this is a, a specialist I had gone to. They also do bone treatment and things as well and just looking at you know myself a very healthy capable person you know with a well I say it's a superficial wound but it's it could be serious if it wasn't treated treated properly so it, 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 it's, I don't want to minimize it I think that's what I end up doing I have a tendency to minimize things a little bit and make it seem as though it's not a big deal or not that important so we'll get back to that. But I start looking at other people and I start looking at their their struggles. I mean, every day they wake up, they have obstacles, physical obstacles that they have to overcome. And I've been blessed and I have the fortunate opportunity to not have to deal with those things. Um, and it's it's makes me, humbles me to think, here I am feeling like I've got an uninteresting life you know, I've got my own struggles and it's, you know, it's, it's easy to sort of forget and end up in a, in a tunnel vision, thinking about just yourself and about the things that you have going on. But sometimes just looking up and looking at the macro view of what everybody around you might be dealing with, you know, that, that you, you know, these are situations that I was able to observe, you know, visually and see what was going on. But there are things that people are dealing with emotionally you know, spiritually, whatever, that, that you can't see, that you don't know who you're interacting with and you don't know what they may have going on in their lives. So it's just, it just makes me thankful for the fact that I feel like I have a pretty good head on my shoulders with things. As far as physical capabilities, I'm in good shape despite uh, the hand injury, which sent me back a couple of weeks. It didn't send me back a lifetime, so I'm fortunate about that. Uh, we take for granted what we have for everything. Like there's so much we have and we take it for granted. We don't even think about it. So anyway, today that was humbling. It was great to, to be able to have that opportunity uh, to, to be put in a situation where that enlightened me again a little bit and it inspired me to think, okay, you know, even my bad day isn't as bad of a day as some other people are definitely having. So back to the subconscious aspect of things, I felt like I, I didn't really do enough. I don't have enough to really talk about, but again, I kind of minimalize my feelings about certain things and I've come to realization of that. Of You know, I, I, I tend to not give myself credit where credit is due. Uh, and, I, and I tend to, even whenever I'm in a situation where might have an adverse reaction. I, I kind of bury it. I don't. I don't really address it necessarily. So what I've discovered as I started to think about it a little bit more, I'm like, you know, I, I I do things that I don't think anybody else really understands and really sees that I do. You know, my hustle is seven days strong hustle. You know, I am on the go seven days a week. You know, 
12 hours a day, at least 12 to, 12 to 16 hours a day. I mean, getting things done. I think some people see maybe this side of me, they see the fun side of me because whenever I'm not hustling and not working and I take an hour, two hours, whatever, in the evening to maybe decompress a little bit, you know, they, they see the, you know, they, they don't see the, they don't see the struggle, they don't see the daily hustle that I have going on. So I think that I, I, I don't associate myself with hustling and, and, and being and making it feel like it's a sacrifice because I don't feel like it's a sacrifice, it's just who I am. Uh, I, I, I guess I've been conditioned to have work ethic. And for me, if I'm not doing something, I'm not being productive, then I feel like I'm not happy. I'm not, it's, I don't, I can't think of anything else I'd rather be doing than trying to build something up, build someone up, do something uh, that's going to increase value socially, um, economically, whatever. So I don't really think about the hustle and what I, how hard I work to really think about how that's adding value um, in, in people's lives. So that comes back to that kind of perspective aspect where, you know, my perspective is hustling and work ethic is just a way of life. Um, and then other people that, you know, don't see the, the world I'm living in or people that don't maybe oh, do see the world I'm living in and they look at what I'm doing and they're like, man, you know, you work all the time and, you know, how do you do it? And it's, I don't know, it's just something I've been conditioned uh, since I was a, a kid, I guess. I mean, my parents both worked, you know, I was in a, in a two-parent working household. Um, but it was interesting because they didn't go to work at the same time in like a nine to five job, they would actually alternate because they wanted to make sure, I guess childcare is expensive and they, and they wanted to be able to raise, to raise us uh, themselves without sending us to someone else to, to babysit us and, and put us in childcare. There's nothing wrong with that uh, for the parents to have to do that, <clears throat> but it's just the path my parents chose. My dad would go to work during the day and then my mom would go work in the evenings so literally my dad would get home, he'd help make dinner. My mom would go work at a local retail store or a pizza shop, um, just working part-time to, to make ends meet. So I, I, that might have been what really really put that work ethic and instilled that work, that work ethic in me. Just seeing the sacrifices that I felt that they were making for us. At the time, I didn't, you know, let's be honest, let's be real here. At the time, as a kid, I wasn't looking at my parents saying, wow, you're working so hard. Look at all those sacrifices. I was a kid. I was, I guess, a little bit greedy. You know, why can't I have the name brand shoes? Why are we shopping at, you know, Hills? You know, Hills is out of business now, but sort of like your Walmart equivalent type stuff. And, and I felt like, you know, I, I had an image or I don't know what it was. I was just trying to keep up with the Joneses. So I was being greedy. I wasn't really thinking about what my parents were doing. But let's face it, I was young and... You know, I wasn't enlightened to the fact of, of what they were actually doing and how hard it was uh, for them to be able to provide us with what they were providing us with, which was, you know, a, a private education at a Catholic school. They, they put braces on all of us for all of our teeth needed work. So these things that I took for granted and just thought that they were a nuisance to me, um, you know, I had to have braces, I had to have a retainer, you're fixing my teeth, this is this is painful, this is annoying, why am I doing this, you know, blah, 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 on and on and on. You know, my parents did these things and it was a sacrifice for them financially um, and I'm sure like emotionally and a relationship and everything because they were taking time from each other, taking time away from the family to be able to, to, to provide. And, and I don't know, maybe because of being exposed to that for so long as a kid, it just feels like second nature. You just provide, you just do. And you don't even think about it, you know, you just put it out of your mind. You don't even consider, you know, it being a sacrifice. It's just what you do. And, and I think that's really where I'm at with what I'm doing entrepreneurially and professionally and in my life is I just do it. Like, I don't think about what I might be missing um, in terms of those fun events, those, those vacations, you know, those, those, you know, massive you know, expensive cars that people are driving and things, you know, I feel like if I pay my dues in time, all that stuff will just happen. 
And I take a lot of my money that I make off of my investments and I, and I reinvest it. So every, you know, I'm, I'm gaining, I feel like I'm slowly gaining momentum where I just keep rolling over, you know, the revenue, the profits uh, from, from continuing operations of, of a couple of businesses I have. I mean, they're not huge. I'm not talking millions of dollars here. I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not that successful yet, but I just know that, you know, over time, you know, you got to put time into it. I'm not going to be an overnight success, but working hard, being um, consistent is really going to help set me up for, set my family up, set everybody up for, for a lifetime of, of opportunity um, and just continuing to, to be able to live off those fruits of labor that I put in, you know, at this time. Like maybe, maybe I did make a sacrifice in not traveling and seeing the world you know, yet, but you know, I do have goals to do that within the next 10 years. And I also have goals of not working the rest of my life either. So I, I want to make sure that I balance all of those things out. I don't want to end up being 75 years old and having, do, having doing nothing but work in my entire life and have nothing to show for it, but a bank full of money or assets and not actually being able to have lived. So, so I need to keep that in check and continue to come back and revisit that and make sure that I'm being true to myself and I'm not doing myself a disservice. That's important. So I look at me being like the self-conscious aspect of me creating these videos. It's that I'm just making the assumption that everybody's like me, right? That everybody's out there hustling, working seven days a week, trying to do all of these these different things trying different things seeing what works what's successful what doesn't work you know making making money here and there just doing small things seeing if it grows into something a little bit bigger i'm just assuming everybody's doing those things um i think it's a false assumption now that i think about it that you know that i don't i don't think that's necessarily the case i, I think i take for granted the fact that maybe I'm a little bit unique in that aspect and that that's a strength that I have. Um, the strength of being able to, to not feel like I'm making these sacrifices and that there's something else uh, that, that I'm missing because I don't feel like I'm missing anything. So my advice would be is if you're ever feeling self-conscious about publishing a video, putting something out there, you know, I, similar to what I'm doing now and similar to what I've done up until this point, you know, I've just kind of put something, just do something to get something out there. Like just do anything, put, put a video of, of your daily thoughts or something out there just to put something in the world to get experience with publishing a video, doing the editing, talking to a camera, talking to your audience just push through it, you know, and, and that's, that's really the, uh, the advice that I would have and, and really what I've been trying to do up until this point, you know, as I talk through these, these videos, I'm sort of counseling myself because I'll talk to the camera and then during my editing process, I'll go through and rewatch my videos and, and see, okay, what, what kind of message am I, am I talking about? What, what is it that I'm, trying to say and and I really actually find out a little bit more about me a little bit more about what it is I'm trying to what I'm aspiring to do um, what are my strengths what are the things that I can build on and in, in terms of content things I can talk about if you are interested in, in starting videos and want to do something online and create a YouTube channel or Instagram account with uh, with various videos and, and content Get out there and try it. I mean, get out there and do it. Um, just one step at a time, one video at a time. And I think that me, what I was looking at is how do I create a video that's gonna maybe go viral, but at the same time, make it that it's viral for the right reasons and not just viral for the sake of, oh man, my cat did something funny or I did something silly and, and and that's what I kind of base everything on because that's not what my channel is about. So my channel is about providing valuable content and being able to really help 
people come together and create a culture of of work ethic and doing and productivity and, and really striving to be what you want to be take 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 those chains of self-consciousness um, and not being valuable enough off and begin to express yourself I mean it's kind of shitty to say but it's true so how many people really care about what what it is that you do or, or um, you know that you embarrass yourself you know and, and how many people remember that either so think about the last time you did something embarrassing you know and you might even forgot yourself in the moment it feels like the world's ending it feels like this is it nobody's ever gonna forget this I'm completely permanently destroyed and tainted and I'm never gonna be able to overcome that that particular moment maybe it was uh, a speech you had done or just something silly you did you peed your pants in school whatever you know it's like the idea in your mind is that you'll never overcome that circumstance or that situation but in reality nobody really cares you care more than anybody else cares you're your own worst critic so when you think about those moments of embarrassment or am I doing the right thing if you from a from a moral and conscious perspective can feel like you're doing the right thing and it's what you want to do and it's not hurting other people then it's then it's the right then it's right that's the right thing to do it's it's fulfilling whatever your objective and whatever your goal is and not worrying about how everybody else is going to perceive it and what it's what it looks like because at the end of the day the only person that you need to really truly impress is yourself everybody else you know, they're gonna come and go they're gonna see you then they're gonna forget you they're gonna laugh at you and then they're gonna go laugh at somebody else and you're you're long gone you know so don't worry about don't worry about uh, what other people are going to say or think about you for something that you truly feel as though is an inspiration and something that you want to uh, achieve and something that you want to do. So this video has really taken a, a, a pretty weird turn, I guess, right? So I'm all over the place, uh, admittingly. I didn't script this out. I had just given this some thought as I was sitting at the doctor's appointment waiting to, to go back into the room and to be seen by the, uh, the hand specialist. But really what I had come to appreciate and understand is that, you know, I have talents, I have opportunities, I do have content that I can share. I am different than everybody else. I have value and you know, I, I have a tendency of, of, like I said before, pushing that value down and not really considering what it's really, what's really worth and minimalizing myself. I need to lift up and realize that I am grateful and humble for all the things that I have and then, and then not feel like I'm not capable because I certainly am capable and I need to start giving my credit where credit is due. The other thing I realized is that my videos are not going to be a hit in terms of production quality. I'm going to try to have the best, you know, as good of camera equipment and things that I can have and audio in, in, the, in the different circumstances I'm in, but it's not going to be a Hollywood production every time I put a video out because it's a lot of work and, and what I'm doing is not creating just video content. It's literally living a life and being productive in building something else, not necessarily building creative videos so I realized you know some of the channels that I subscribe to and things that I look at you know the production quality is cool it's 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 enticing it, it really grips me but I just don't have the the resources yet to have the camera crews and the editors and the people on the team to, to create that so again this is a this is a journey for me that I'm starting uh, to to starting to explain and to bring folks along on um, as I'm interested to see how I can help other people with their journeys and, and help to 
uh, create inspiration and motivation and help people identify what their strengths are and how they can utilize those to, to become successful in, uh, in any way that you know they're, they're looking to, to achieve the best that they can in their life. So I realize my, my videos are gonna be eh, a little bit one dimensional, right? So this entire video for the most part has been me talking into a camera while I'm driving around. So you're driving around with Brian Donovan. I'm giving you some random thoughts that are going through my mind just to get some content out there, just to start to, to create a little bit of a dialogue. And you know, maybe I'll get a few people to watch this. If I do, great. If I don't, that's fine, it's there. And maybe at some point in the future, somebody will dig it up um, and look at this video. Maybe, maybe you're looking at this video now and it's a video that I had recorded five years ago, right? So maybe I'm a completely different person at this point, five years, you know, five years from now, the, the person that you know now may not be the person that, that I am today filming this video. So just think about that. Put videos out there, create content, um, and just be yourself. Don't be afraid of what other people think. Try to throw self-consciousness out the window. It's a little weird talking to a camera by yourself for the first time because you're really talking to yourself. So listen, I'm just about home. I want to wrap this up. I just want to encourage you to take a look at yourself. Be thankful for what you have. Be humble. Be grateful. Start there. Then start to really think about what it is that you want to be. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks you should be or what you think people think you should be, just go ahead and, and really think about it and be true to yourself and, and really figure out what it is that you want to be. Go for it. Figure out a plan. Write it down. Um, talk about it. Create a video. It's amazing when I go back and look at these videos how much I feel like I've learned about myself as I've recorded myself, just brainstorming thoughts. It's literally like being in my own head and hearing, hearing myself truly tell me what I should be doing. And it's, it's, very, it's a very interesting dynamic when you're truly just having a conversation with yourself and then when you play it back maybe an hour or two hours later just to see where you know, what was going through your head? How did, how did that come about? And, and really analyzing that a little bit to figure out, huh, you know, what, what is it that, that I'm offering? What is it that I have, you know, context-wise? So get a camera out, talk to it, talk to yourself, figure out what you want to do. The most important thing, though, to remember out of this entire video is to get out there, be productive, do some hustling, Get up off your butt. Go do something, do anything. Just do something that is out of the ordinary. Do something that is going to bring value in your life or, or lives of other people around you. Go volunteer. Go pick up litter off the side of the road. Just do something that, just start somewhere. I, it, it is amazing, you know, how just doing that one thing will just inspire you and, and get you motivated to move on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So you got to start somewhere. Start small. Do something that's seemingly just insignificant. But at the end of the day, it's not. It, it's really going to be the start of the rest of your life and the start to get that momentum moving in the right direction for positivity and productivity. So get out there, start your hustle, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video.